This video is from the course Introduction. It's designed for complete beginners and assumes you have no knowledge of the subject matter. If you are interested in more beginner, intermediate or advanced content, check out our website submeta.io. We're talking about guard retention now. Guard retention is a really important skill to develop. So what it means is essentially keeping Liv in front of my legs in my guard and not letting her get better position. So if you think about the bottom position and not wanting to get in a spot where you can be submitted, then guard retention is the thing you need to develop for that. So if you look at, for example, side control, if Liv were to get past my legs and into side control, then now she can start to isolate an arm. She can start to potentially um, set up submissions from there. She can go towards mount and, and similar thing. I can be attacked uh, for, for submissions. As long as my feet are in front, my legs are in front, then any kind of submission, especially on the upper body she goes for, can be blocked with my legs. So it's a very important skill to develop to be able to keep your opponent in front of your legs. So we're gonna go through some of the principles first on what you should know to make that more difficult for your opponent to pass your guard. So there's four main things we want you to think about from a principles perspective. There is keeping your knees close to your chest, framing, which is using my arms, facing your opponent. So anytime my opponent starts to get an angle, I want to try and face them and not face away. And having a small part of your body on the ground so that you can rotate. So as Liv starts to go around, being able to spin myself along the mat to face my opponent again. So knees to the chest or knees close to the chest. What I'm trying to do, if you think about something like side control, Liv is really going to occupy this space between my, my shoulders and my knees here. She's in side control, it would be the same for mount. If we go back just a little step or two, if I'm here and my knees cover that space, it's very difficult. If Liv pressures in, she can't actually get that position. She's gonna to have to work to separate my knees from my chest to actually pass. So what we don't want is to do that job for them, okay? I don't want to reach out towards Liv with my legs and separate my knees from my chest, giving her a chance to pass. All right, so when I've got an opponent away, it's, it's often a bad idea to start reaching for them with your legs, unless you've got good control of them already. I want to be keeping my knees tight. Another thing to, to try to avoid is putting your feet on the ground to move. You notice when my feet go to the ground, I open up a lot of space, okay? So it's better if you can learn to move with your feet back, okay? So if Liv starts to pass, I can move along the mat like this, more so than putting my feet down, opening that space, and giving her more of a chance to, to pass in. The next one to talk about is frames. So wanting to keep my feet in front of my opponent at, at all times really, when Liv clears my feet, I wanna be using my arm to frame. It gives me enough distance to start to get my feet back in front. So you should be doing this early. As soon as your feet get cleared, you should be looking to frame. And you can frame on the, the arms or you can frame on the legs if she's quite tall. I can push on the legs as well to help realign my feet back in front of my opponent. If I were to miss the frames, so if I was to go here and not frame, she's gonna close the gap and now it's, she's too close for my legs to get in front. So you need to frame early. Have your arms ready when they start to pass the line of your legs to push and re-engage, facing your opponent. As Liv passes, she might want to push me to turn away. All right, this is not good because I can't get either my legs or my hands in front to defend. So. You need to make an active decision when they start to pass to turn in to face your opponent. So by, by immediately recognizing and turning in, you're gonna make it a lot harder for your opponent to turn away and then your frames can get your, your legs back. The last point is having a small part of your body on the ground. So if for example, my head's on the ground, my hips are on the ground and my whole back is flat like this, if Liv starts to pass, 
and I want to move to follow her, it's, I've got a lot of friction to actually try and get some movement going. Instead, if I curl my hips back and my head just a little bit off the ground here, I can move quite easily. I've got a small part of my body on the ground. It's going to help me spin. Okay, so as soon as I get a, a frame, for example, here, I can use that to, to redirect my hips and follow. So we tend to want to have this posture where we're slightly seated up with our, with our feet back like this. So in summary, we want to be keeping our knees close to our chest. We want to be framing as if our opponent starts to beat, the, beat our feet. We want to be facing our opponent as soon as they get an angle on us. And we want to be making sure our hips are off the ground and heads off the ground so we can swivel. I hope you enjoyed this video from the course Introduction on submeta.io. If you go to submeta.io, you can watch this course for free, uninterrupted, with exercises to help you with recall. Also for free, we have the follow-up course to this, Foundations 1, Escapes, which builds on the content you'll be learning in this course.